milk producer setting targets case introduction. We'll try to help a milk producer that wants to grow via M&A select potential targets. Since he's considering 100 potential targets, we'll have to create a ranking. A few information about him. So he is located in Poland and he's considering, as we said, 100 potential targets all over the Eastern Europe. The market are divided into 10 regions and he has a different preferences for those regions. In total, he will consider four criteria that we'll discuss in details in the next lecture. And as said, your task is to try and rank all potential targets and suggest him which one would be the best choice given his criteria. Now we'll move on to the data in Excel. I'll show you what kind of data we've got at our disposal. And you will be asked to play with them and try to rank each and every potential target. Later on, as always, we'll discuss the solution. So let's move to the Excel data and see what you will have to do in this case study. Let's have a look at the data which are available for you for this case study and what you are supposed to do. So please open file attached to the lecture which is called Milk Producer Selecting Targets Empty. And here, as always, in the master sheet, you find a table of content. We have a special sheet where we have the data on potential targets and later on separate sheets where we have rules for awarding points for given criteria. As we said, there are four criteria. So we're gonna award some points for the revenue level, for the percentage of beta, automation level, and as we said, location, as they have some preferences when it comes to location. For each and every criteria, we will give points from one to five, depending on the level. Before we go into details on the criteria, let's have a look at the data. In the sheet data, you will see that we have listed the data for each and every potential target. So for example, for target one, we have named the region where they are located, revenue level, a beta, percentage beta, number of people and automation level. The points you should calculate starting from column O to column R. And then on the basis of the points we give for each and every criteria, you should calculate the weighted average points in column S. Use the things that you have learned in the previous case on defining ranking. We have also defined in row 2 the weights we award for each and every criteria. So for example, revenue will get weight of 30%, percentage of beta 15, automation level 30, and then the region 25. On top of that, we want you to calculate the increase in total beta using the fact that the buyer, the milk producer, since he's a strategic investor, will be able to boost the percentage of beta from the current level, which is in column L, to 20%. So use the difference in percentages and also the current revenue level to calculate what could be the increased total in a beta. Assumed, obviously, that we have the same revenue, but the percentage of beta jumps from the current level to the 20%. And finally, try to also calculate the potential acquisition price the potential acquisition price will calculate using the current level of beta and defined multiplier. The multiplier we have defined in the sheet parameters. So it will be four for the unconsolidated terms. And later on, once we buy the company and consolidate them, it will be jumping to eight. As we said, you have to give points for four different criteria. And we have defined for every criteria the rules for giving those points. So, for example, for the revenue, we have defined that we will give the points in the following way. If your revenues are from 0 to 20, you'll get one point. From 20 to 40, two points. From 40 to 60, three points. The highest score you will get is your revenues are from 60 to 80. And then they are going down to four if it's above 80. So, in a sense, we prefer middle-sized companies, not big ones. In the very same manner, we have defined the criteria for the beta level automation level and the regions. So have a look at them and using the defined rules, award points in sheet data, starting from column O to column R, and then calculate the weighted average points. And finally, calculate also the increase in total beta as well as potential acquisition price. As always, I suggest to pause now the lecture to solve the case on your own. And once you are done, please move to the next lecture where I will show you the solution to this case study. This case should be solved in the very same manner as we did the previous cases on rankings. So if you have any troubles with the formulas, just go to the previous case and check how we did it there. So I leave you to solve the case on your own. And once you're done, move on to the next lecture. I hope you managed to do the ranking on your own. But just in case, let's go through the solution.
So open a file attached to the lecture, which is called milk producer selecting targets. And here we will have the ranking already prepared for you. So if you go to data sheet, you will find that we have already assigned points for each and every criteria. So for example, if we are looking at the target number one in row one, it will get one point for revenues, three points for percentage of beta. This is 4%. So it would suggest that we rather prefer companies with lower percentage of beta as it gives us more room for improvement so we can more drastically increase the results. Then we gave five points for the automation level. The automation level is very low. Again, we prefer companies with low automation level as it gives us a bigger space for improvement. And finally, we gave five points. So the highest mark for the region white. This would suggest that we, for some reason, love region white. Thanks to that, we were able to calculate the weighted average point using the function sum product. Obviously, for that, we use the weights we have defined here. So if we change them, obviously, they will also impact weighted average points. Now, as we said, you were supposed to also calculate what could be the increase in total EBITDA. And as we said, this is a difference between the level of percentage EBITDA that we can achieve thanks to our knowledge as a strategic investor and the current percentage EBITDA. We also have to take into account the current revenue level. So in the case of target one, given the revenue and the fact that they have currently just 4% EBITDA, we are able to increase the beta by 1 million. And then in the case, for example, of target 12, we are able to increase the beta to 10 million. Now, finally, in column Y, we've got the potential acquisition price. And as we said, this will be the multiplication of the multiplier and current beta level. Since the multiplier is 4, then it will have here simply the multiplication of the 4 by EBITDA level. So in the case of, for example, target 3 in row 6, you can see that the EBITDA is 10 million, and then we would have to pay for that roughly 40 million if we buy that. Then if we look, for example, at target 9 in row 12, the potential acquisition price will be 88 million because they have a 22 million of EBITDA currently. So this is roughly what you should get in your Excel. For the awarding points, as in the previous case, we use the VLOOKUP function. So if we had intervals, like for example, in the case of the revenues, we would use the VLOOKUP function with one at the end. On the other hand, we just had the one option, like it was in the case of the automation level, we would use in the VLOOKUP function at the end zero. So check your solution against mine, check the formulas. And as always, if you have any questions regarding what we do here, please let me know by posting this question into the discussion field. In the next lecture, I will show you how you can use the ranking. And also later on, we'll discuss threshold analysis that helps you analyze certain things in bulk without analyzing separate specific targets. So far, we have just created the ranking. Now it's time to put it to good use and see how we can decide which companies will buy using the ranking. So let's first select the area of the ranking and then let's go to the sort option that you can find in the data panel. You pick as an option that you will use to sort the data, the weighted average points. And then when it comes to ordering, just pick largest to smallest. So now he has ordered all the targets starting from the most attractive to least attractive. So if we just look at the weighted average points awarded in column S, the most attractive is target 86, then second in terms of attractiveness is 38, 45, and so on and so forth. Obviously, this is just looking at the attractiveness measured in weighted average points and in a sense disregarding the increasing total beta. In some cases, you might rather want to concentrate on the things that give the biggest potential increase. So in this case, you would sort not by weighted average points, but you would sort by increase. So let's gonna do that. So instead of weighted average points, we're gonna select here the increase in a beta. And then again, we're gonna do it from largest to smallest. So now we at the very top can see the options that generate as the biggest increase in total EBITDA. And in our case, it will be option 79, target 79. It will give us roughly 19 millions of additional EBITDA. The second preferable option is target 15, later on 18, 45, and so on and so forth. 
Another way to use ranking is to combine two criteria. So look at the increase in total beta and also at the weighted average points. So for that, we're going to use the ranking we have created so far. So we have ordered all the options using the increase in total beta and we have ordered the targets starting from the targets with the highest impact to the lowest. Now, on top of that, we want to have some selection when it comes to weighted average points. So we want to just have targets that, let's say, have a weighted average points of four. So they are very, very attractive. To do that, we're going to go to filters and we're going to pick the number of filters. And then here you pick the greater or equal to option and you just press four. So now we have selected and ordered targets that have attractiveness of four and we have ordered them when it comes to the total potential increase in EBITDA. So if we would like to concentrate only on targets that are super attractive, so above or equal to four, the best choice would be target 45, then target 98, target 38, and so on and so forth. In total, they would enable us to increase the EBITDA by 66 million. We can also check how much it would cost to buy all of them. So if we decided to buy all of those targets, it would cost us 69 million. So this is the way to play with the rankings. So you can order using one of the criteria. So either increasing total EBITDA or weighted average point. And then you can decide to filter through the options using some additional conditions. So in this case, we decided to have just targets that are extremely attractive. So above four. So have a look at that and play with the ranking. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to do a group analysis. We have called it threshold analysis. So far, we have created a ranking and we played with the ranking in order to select potential targets. You can also try to analyze the big picture and select the targets using a little bit different approach. And this is what we're going to try to do in this lecture. For that, we're going to use something which I called threshold analysis, where we define the thresholds on each and every criteria and use them in order to be able to decide what we should do. So first we define the minimal average weighted score in which we are interested. So as you can see, for time being, we have decided that we will be only interested in companies that have attractiveness of at least three or higher. Then we also define the minimal additional EBITDA that we can generate. Again, we will be only interested in companies with potential of four million or more. In other words, we will not consider smaller companies with smaller potential. This enables us to analyze the whole portfolio of all the potential targets, obviously using the data from the sheet data. So in other words, the ranking. One way or the other, as you can see, given the thresholds that we have defined, so the minimal average weighted score and the minimal additional EBITDA, we are able to consider 36 potential targets. In other words, 36 potential targets are fulfilling this criteria. So they have a minimal average weighted score of three and minimal additional EBITDA of four. Now we can use this data to go a little bit further and see by how much we can increase the beta. So first we have to estimate what is the potential additional beta that we as a strategic investor can create in acquired firm. And from the data in the ranking, we can see that it's 325 million. This would mean that in total, our EBITDA would grow to 428 million if we acquire the 36 potential targets. The total EBITDA gained the acquisition is calculated using the potential additional EBITDA that we have estimated in a data sheet and obviously the current EBITDA that they have. Now, on top of that, we can look at the impact on enterprise value. So our company, as we said, since it will be a consolidated one, will be estimated using the EBITDA and also obviously using the multiplier. So if we add additional 428 million of EBITDA and we are valued at 8% of our EBITDA, this would mean that we would increase the enterprise value, so the value of the company, by 3.4 billion. Obviously, we also have to deduct the debt in order to be able to see what will be the impact for the shareholders. And for that, we have to calculate how much we will spend on those companies. So as you can see in row 20, we are estimating cost of acquiring the firms and they are equal to 521 million. The first element purchase price is simply the sum of money we'll have to spend on the companies, on the 36 companies that we want to buy. 
given the criteria that we have just defined, obviously assuming a multiplier of four. As we said, it will be lower for unconsolidated companies. Given also other additional costs, this means that we will have to spend almost half a billion on cost of acquiring the firms. Now, if we finance this acquisition through debt, this would mean that the equity value, so the value for the shareholders, will increase by almost 3 billion. And this is the difference between the impact of enterprise valuation, which we have estimated in row 16, and additional debt required for M&A, which is the cost of acquiring the firms. So in other words, if we buy the 36 companies and we are able to generate additional EBITDA, this would mean that we would be able to increase the equity value by almost 3 billion. Now, if you change the criteria, obviously this estimation will change as well. So let's increase minimal average weighted score to four. And you will see that we will have just six targets and the impact on equity value will be just half a billion. So by playing with the thresholds, you can see the whole portfolio and you can see what will be the total impact on your equity. So what will be the impact on the shareholder situation? So have a look at that, play with the file. And as always, if you have any questions regarding this case study, please let me know by posting them into discussion field or email me directly in Udemy.